I'm proud to second this Green Amendment that is full of more of our good ideas for the Mayor, and I just want to talk about two of them um, while seconding for, uh, today. Uh, the first is about giving people who live in social housing real resources to be heard in the running of their homes and champions here in City Hall. Following the cross-party recommendation of the Assembly Housing Committee in our report in September called Hearing Resident Voices in Social Housing, we will provide for a social housing commissioner for London who would be a social housing resident themselves to work here in this building. They would sit on the Homes for Londoners board, influence the Mayor's policies and act as the voice of Londoners living in social housing. The Mayor has argued in his response today to the report that regulations and enforcement in housing is the remit of the government, so um, only a national, a national social housing commissioner should exist. But London's Victims Commissioner, despite the same kinds of limitations in powers, has nevertheless started to have a real impact at a London level, ranging from changes to strategies to changing the detailed wording of automated emails the Met sends to victims of crime, following concerns she received from victims themselves. A social housing commissioner for London could work the same way and have the same impact, and we want to give someone the chance to do that job. We will also give more help to communities facing changes to their estates and their areas. We are at one in this assembly, I think, in supporting resident-led planning and giving people facing demolition a final say. And the Mayor has set aside £10 million to support councils, housing and planning teams with skills to challenge developer viability claims when they mean we might lose affordable housing from new plans. But our residents need the training and support the Mayor can offer too, and they need people in City Hall to help them when they have problems with their landlords not sticking to the Mayor's best practice guide to estate regeneration or breaking the terms of his new ballot policy that was so hard fought for. Just this week, the residents of St Raphael's estate in Brent have launched a petition asking for residents to control the future of their estate and for help to fight for refurbishment, not demolition. And I've also spoken with residents on Ebury Bridge estate in Westminster. They say not only is their council dodging a ballot on their new plans for the estate, but they are also playing fast and loose with the main provisions for consultation and choosing options in the Mayor's Best Practice Guide. This part of our amendment therefore also provides both for training for residents on how to scrutinise developer plans and for funding for a team of officers to hear complaints from estates and advise on getting real best practice and fairness. The final part of our amendment continues our three-year push for more investment in young people. This is something we'll always push for until we're investing more in young Londoners than we were in 2011, not much less as my annual research on the cuts across London has exposed. Greens will keep hunting out, hunting out any new funding we can find for youth work and youth services. And this year it appears from the draft budget on page 103 that the government's business rate levy will provide the GLA with an unexpected surplus of £8 million, which the budget, budget indicates has yet to be allocated. The Green Group therefore puts all of this money to use to be spent on work to support young people. We propose the Mayor uses £4 million as further funding to be distributed via the Young Londoners Fund. This extremely welcome fund, set up last year following our budget proposals, is oversubscribed, making it easy to see how this money could be put to work on the ground this year. And for the other £4 million, we want to extend prevention work to support young people who are already in custody or convicted and sentenced. This money would be well spent on expanding current diversion work by the Met and community works groups that already support and advise ex-offenders. It will help to support not only rehabilitation, but also the problems of housing, finding work, and lack of social support that so often leads to reoffending. And if any more additional funds come in from councils in their final returns this month, we would ask for this also to go into youth work and support for young Londoners too. Thank you, and I hope that this year the Green Budget Amendment will again provide food for thought and good ideas that will be taken up by other groups and the Mayor in future.